Hi everybody, I'm here in Syracuse, New York, and I'm totally honored. And this relationship actually started in Binghamton, New York, my hometown, because I was passing through, I think in 09, you guys didn't have a shelter yet. We were just, yeah, not yet. But I gave them, yeah. thanks to Haynes, enough socks yeah. that they could do outreach for almost a full year handing out socks. And then we kind of became friends, and now you have a shelter. And yeah. this is Alan. And we are at the Rescue Mission in Syracuse, the Rescue Mission Alliance. Yeah, the Rescue Mission Alliance of Syracuse, yes. So, if you follow me at all, you know that I love the Rescue Mission model. If you're in a church, this is the model you should follow because there's, a, see, there's they have to turn people away. You know, you want people in your church, you know, feed them, house them, clothe them. You know? Absolutely. And if you're a rescue mission, this is the model because these guys get it. And I love what you're doing. Thank you. So, yeah. Alan, yes. we've got this whole complex here yes. in Syracuse. Yes. And you got homes in Auburn and yeah. Binghamton and Ithaca. a new one, Ithaca. Yeah. Tell me about it. So, our mission, it starts there. We share hope, we end hunger and homelessness, we change lives. And with every life we change, we strengthen the community one person at a time. And we do in fact believe that we do end homelessness for that person coming into the shelter tonight, for that family moving into their apartment tomorrow. We know that we can end homelessness for that person. This, this whole area uh, is called the Mission District. And as I was driving in, there was a sign, not put up by them, but put up by the Syracuse or probably New York State Department of- I have no idea where it came from, but somebody did it. Yeah, I mean, so. so, but it wasn't, you know, it was an actual traffic sign with an arrow pointing here. Yeah. And you know what yeah. that said to me? They work with the community. So one of the things that your guys are doing, and pinch me, pinch me please, you guys are doing permanent supportive housing. You're getting people into housing. We, we are. In fact, every given night, we have about 250 people in residence with us in Syracuse. About 100 of those people are in permanent supportive housing just in Syracuse. And then we are also working with 10 families at a time in a permanent supportive housing in Auburn. And uh, both Bith uh, Binghamton and Ithaca are permanent supportive housing environments. On average, we're placing 40 people a month in a permanent housing. 40 people a month. Now see, your typical rescue mission, and I love your rescue missions, but we gotta get with it. Your typical rescue mission has a shelter. Some of them are 30 days in, 30 days out. I don't understand that, but that's how we've evolved. You know, some of them are year shelters, maybe a little longer. Some of them are 90 day shelters. Who gets their life together in 90 days, okay? But they're typically a cot, yeah. And, you know, there's not a whole lot of dignity. Well, I've been walking around and just, you know, I took a picture of your, um, what you call an outreach. Yeah, yeah, store, yeah. To yeah. give to people. And the dignity. I mean, it was yeah. like a real nice yeah. store. Yeah. So anyways, here is this rescue mission that is providing the shelter that's mm -hmm. needed on Absolutely. a transitional basis and a temporary basis. But you're actually helping people get out of homelessness absolutely if you're in an emergency shelter you're still homeless and our goal is to move you out of homelessness and into a place of your own so our goal all of our programs are aligned towards that end right so we help you find income we help you find housing we help you um, if you need mental health services will provide you and connect you with that uh, other health services will connect you with that but it's all about moving you out of homelessness right. and last year we helped over 440 people put homelessness behind them and move into a place of their own that's amazing and and this is a Christ centered program yes because yeah. Christ would end homelessness. He wouldn't run around with a Bible mandating memory scriptures and mandating prayer time. He would get people into the life that God wants them to be. And I just love, now I'm getting a little bit, you know, many of you know, this is my opinion, not necessarily Alan's, but you're a little progressive than your typical rescue mission. Yeah. Yes, because it, because it doesn't, it's not just about saving souls for us. Um, it is about that person that's still under the bridge. It's about that person that's in an abandoned trailer somewhere, that family living in their car. And we know that that 
you know, that's not sustainable and that's not a life that we would want to have and our neighbors shouldn't have that either. And so we are about moving them out of homelessness and into a place of their own. Now, we are committed to spiritual life and we have a team of five chaplains embedded in our programs throughout all of our regions, all of our communities that are there to offer encouragement and prayer and support. Um, yesterday, we just celebrated a man that was baptized in our chapel. But at the end of the day, everything is voluntary. They engage as they want to. We meet them where they are and it's about moving them out of homelessness. See, most places, um, they actually, it's a coercion. It's like, are you hungry? Say the sinner's prayer. Are you hungry? Say the sinner's prayer. And really what Jesus would do is just love on everybody and help everybody. And it really is the way to do church. I see you wanting to say something. Uh, yeah, Go because for it. For us, like, we have a way that we frame that. We'd rather people experience the gospel first before they hear it. Oh, I love that. And so um, that's embedded in uh, the culture of our programming. We want to meet people where they are and care for them and love them, um, regardless of whether or not they ever come to faith. You know, right. that's okay. That it, we believe we are called to do the job that's in front of us with yeah. the person at hand, and uh, everything else will happen. The old model, the rescue mission model, which is still better than the typical church model, the old model of the rescue mission was the priority was winning souls. I don't even know what that means really, but you know, they're trying to get people to say a sinner's prayer. And that has evolved. Nobody was bad. It's just how the programming of church and evangelism has made it to get people to go out and get other people to say a prayer. Come on, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But to get people to work together to end homelessness, yeah. whoa! Yeah. And, and you guys, you just got a new grant. We did, uh, very exciting. So it was announced yesterday, a $3.4 million grant from the state of New York, the Homeless and Housing Assistance Program. That coupled with the $2 million grant we got last fall from the Federal Home Loan Bank in New York is going to help renovate and expand our shelter services, which opens the door for more permanent housing on our campus. Our goal is to expand permanent housing capacity here by 60 beds in the next three years. Oh my gosh. So um, I could sit in here and talk to you forever. We, we, we've been having that conversation. I mean, oh, we just came from a coffee shop slash thrift store. 315, yeah. Yeah, that, that looked like something that was uh, high-end marketing yep. and it's, you know, you know, a lot of thrift stores you go to for rescue missions and stuff are a little bit dumpy. Come on, let's be real. Yeah. This was college kids enjoying coffee and yeah. shopping. I mean, yeah. come on. We're it's... trying to raise the raise the profile of what it means to be a thrift store shopper. And so whether it's at 315 or our thrifty shopper stores, of which we have 14, our customers love how we merchandise our product and we stand out against, I would say, larger retailers as well. And it helps generate a ton of revenue oh, that goes awesome. towards supporting programs and services that feed, clothes, shelter, and move people out of homelessness. So here is the $20 million question. I'm out there, I manage a rescue mission, and I kind of feel what you're feeling, but I'm hitting that wall, Yeah. that wall of religion, yeah. or that wall of status quo. How do you move forward? How do you, how do you create something that's going to really be relevant to the needs of the people? I, I think you have to start with what the needs of the people are. And, and I, I look really at the basic needs and how are you meeting those first and foremost? And, and are they moving people forward with their lives or are they keeping them where they are? Mm -hmm. and, and so I start there. Um, then I look at the culture of my staff and I think, you know, are we the kind of place that encourages um, spiritual exploration, uh, that it's okay to come into a program but not engage, or um, are we a place that forces it on people? I, personally, I, I, am, I, I respond better to someone that's willing to put their arm around me and spend some time talking to me and encouraging me than someone telling me what to do. And, and so I start there and then I engage in the community. Um, engage with your local continuum of care, your local homeless task force. Take that risk. I understand it could be big. It could be a big risk. Take it. It's worth doing it, and it's going to lead to better outcomes for the people you serve. Yeah. As many of you know, uh, I support the Home for Good in Los Angeles because it takes the faith base, the politicians, the nonprofits, and the businesses, and all come to the same table to have a discussion about ending homelessness. And as I travel in a lot of communities, it's usually the, the missions that are over on their own side. And it's not that it's bad, it's, it's an evolution in, in you housing first people. We need to include the missions and the shelters in the conversation sure, absolutely. because that's a part yeah. of it all. And 
Um, I really just, I cannot say this enough, how much I love the model here. I keep on wanting to call you the Syracuse Rescue Mission. That's fine, that's fine. But you're so bigger than yeah, Syracuse. Right. Actually, I want to call them the new and improved rescue mission. And uh, I mean, you know, with the stamp on the thing and everything else, that'd be cool, you know. But no, that's uh, cool. Uh, how do people support you? How do they find you? Um, they can go to rmlifechanging.org. That's the best way, our website. Uh, check it out. It's new as of May. Um, I think you'll be impressed with it. And it's cutting edge, in my opinion, it's out there. So um, best way to find out about us, rmlifechanging.org. If you're in Syracuse, come and visit us. We'd love to host you in the Mission District. And one thing I would say, going back to engaging in the community, is remember, God's at work in all pockets of the community. And uh, caring for those in need, is a common ground experience that you can have with someone. So maybe you're coming from a place of faith and you've been nervous about engaging with people in the community. Remember, there are Christians at work in the government. There are Christians at work in other organizations, other agencies. And so, uh, and, and where there aren't specifically those that say they're, they're a Christian, um, there are people of faith that care about the poor and want to see homelessness ended. That's common ground, and I believe that's what God has called us to. Thank you much for having me today. It is our pleasure. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, everybody.